Grace Face uh, <clears throat> had to do this video, had a cancellation tonight uh, in, set, in a session here. Um, so I have a little window that I, I uh, need to get this message out. It's a pretty strong one tonight. I hear about this all too often, way too often in sessions. And it's time to um, get the word out about this. It's time to really talk about this. Forewarning, if you have kids around, we are going to be talking about adult content in this video. So uh, please take your kids out of the room uh, as we are going to talk about some things tonight that uh, need to be said, uh, need to be heard, need to be dealt with. Um, so uh, me and Miles here are gonna, are gonna break it down for you. Uh, Miles knows all about it, right buddy? <laughs> no, actually he wouldn't know. Um, thankfully in the last four years I've had Miles, he's, well, let's not get into that. Anyway, um, <laughs> all right. We got to get serious tonight here for a little for a little bit. And before I get started, uh, I just want to say real quick, briefly, I am starting up that parenting group. I am starting up the dating group. I am having a worship service every Sunday, and uh, we're going to start up the prayer and fast group in September. So please reach out to me if you are interested in any of those, so I can get you signed up. Um, I just need uh, I need you guys to let me know. Email me at traceface_it at gmail.com. Before I, I really dive off into, you know, the meat and bones of, of what's happening here, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> uh, I first off want to say that narcissists, okay, not only will use sex as a, as a weapon, as a tool, as a way to getting to certain people, the main thing that I, I've recognized in my lifetime is that narcissists will try to do different avenues, use different avenues all the time, actually, uh, depending on who they're dealing with. The thing that they love the most, the most, is, is the, the, the predatory way in which they're going to capture someone. So what they're doing in the beginning, okay, is they are literally... Uh, studying you, okay? They're studying you. What are you all about? What are you into? What's your thing? Uh, are you are you into are you more intellectual? Are you do you dress kind of you know? Are you into the lust thing? Is that your thing? Uh, are you uh, you know? Uh, <clears throat> is your th is your thing like humor? You know, and so so they're trying to study you. In the beginning and they're very good at this and they're and they're trying to pick up certain things and these are the avenues they're going to use to getting their victims to to catching their to hooking the victims okay to hooking the target that that you essentially are to the narcissist so this is what they do their entire game and their their entire charade is how do i get this person to fall in love with me or to be all about me or to be that into me how do i do it and so for many of you you're thinking to yourself well when they come back hoovering around after you like saw something that they did and you're like okay i think i'm all set with this with this person their whole thing is that they're going to uh sit back on it and they're going to hoover because it's fun it's a game to them it's enjoyable to to play push and pull uh, hot and cold, uh, back and forth. Uh, I'll give you something, I take it away. The pickaboo, pickaboo games. And you guys think when they come, you know, sniffing around again that it means something. And all it means is that this is fun for them, guys. It doesn't mean anything other than that you're part of their vortex now. You will forever be. As a, as a malignant narcissist, you're always going to be part of this vortex. Don't ever underestimate that. You might think, oh, no, 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 I haven't heard from this person in a while. And it, No, 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 you're in charge of that. You're the only person that's ever going to be able to shut down what they're doing. It's you. Because in their heads, 
you know, and their little black book because that's what it is to them. Remember back in the day, they call it the little black book. That's what this is. You're in their little black book. So you have to understand how this, this, this works, okay? First and foremost, the name of their game is how do I get all these people to like me? How do I get these people to fall for me? How do I get these people to be into me? What do I have to do to, to make this person? You know, I was telling a, a client in session today about narc number one in my life. Narc number one and I had an emotional connection for many, many years. It wasn't even sexual. He roped me in this way. Okay? So, so... I, th that's the first thing I want people to understand is that they're going to see what you're all about and that's going to be the, the play that they make. That's going to be the card that, they, that, they, that they're using. And you have to understand this. You have to understand how they, they operate. They're not going to be all about the sex when you, they see that you're all about morals, values, standards. They're going to be about, they're going to they're gonna come to you at another angle to try and capture you. Because it's a game to them. It's a game. It, it has nothing to do with you. You're just another person that they can say, oh, I got this. I got him. I got him. And, and guys, they literally do. They literally do put their heads on their pillow at night. And I know this from living with one because he would give, you know, or living with several. They give themselves away by how they talk about other people in certain situations and circumstances. So I can tell you, that they lay, they lay their head in the pillow like, look at that dumb, dumb idiot. Totally fell hit, hook, line, and sinker for that line today. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this one. She gave herself. Well, I've got it. Took two seconds. I walked in the door. She had her skirt up over her head. What a slut. This is how they think, you guys. About you and about situations. It's And it's not about, like... You're so cool and you're so neat and you're so unique. It's just about you're another you're another notch on their belt. You're another number. Okay. So keeping all that information in mind of how they operate, how they work, how they're going to use this to 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 getting you. We need to get into how bad this can get now. Okay. Now, once they've got you where they believe they've got you, whether it be that they got you in your mind, They've got your mind. They've got your heart. It's sick, guys, but this is how it works. They've got your heart. Uh, they've captured your spirit. You believe that your spirits are very much interactive and, and, and uh, an equal exchange here. Okay. Well, they know, as forever a malignant narcissist, they know that the sex is going to be the way to truly now hook you to them. And this is going deep into the soul okay this is how it works and uh what many if most of us did not know is it was never about us it was the sex was never just about us and them the sex was about capturing us the sex was about using it as a weapon the sex is about c controlling you i mean some of them they're going to try to get you pregnant guys they're going to try to get you pregnant. And, and a woman, a woman, a female narcissist is going to use the sex to every single advantage she could possibly get in her life. Every single opportunity that presents itself, she's going to utilize that to getting all of her fans. Okay? The fans. So it's all about a numbers game, guys. And they, they like notches on their belt. They like... Get in the bed, getting in bed at night and giggling, going, look at these dumb idiots. So think about now for a second the narcissist and how absolutely everything that they, they are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, minute to minute, hour to hour, uh, week by week, month by month, is um is um exactly is yeah, we're gonna talk about OnlyFans. Um Everything they're doing is about the self, okay? It's the self. Self-gratification, self-validation. Me, 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 how, 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 how? 
all of you, all of you, all of you, you know, and it's got nothing to do with you guys. It's about them. It's about them. They're going to do whatever they got to do to get their rocks off. Okay? And that's what, that's what you have to remember about a narcissist. They are selfish to the core. They are so beyond selfish. It does not get any, it can't possibly get any further than that. Um, yes. Okay, you guys are, get, are getting this. It's, it's all about the self. And exactly right, they lie. They, they lie to get whatever it is that they're looking for. Okay, and that they, they, they want and that they need. And what they need is they need targets. They need a pool of people that they forever know are going to be there if perhaps the primary source of supply is out of the picture. Okay, I don't have a primary source. Who can I jump in the pool with now? Oh, let me get in. Let me get in with this person today, this week. This will do it for me. Okay. Guys. It has gotten so bad out there. It is, these sexual deviants are, are so far taken with this, okay? They're so far taken with this that they don't think there is anything wrong with the things I'm about to talk to you about tonight. They think nothing of this. They think nothing of OnlyFans, as Josh just mentioned. They think nothing of, of, randomly calling people up on Instagram and having sex with one another through the through the phone through the through the camera this is what they're doing people are doing they think nothing absolutely nothing it's 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 like an everyday task for them to watch pornography like it's their job this is literally what they spend their time doing i have a client the minute she put a recorder up in her house she put the the voice recorder up in her house to hear what was going on because she knew after she married this loser, loser of life, she knew that the intimacy was dying. Something wasn't right. She knew it. Okay. And she puts the recorder on. It was like clockwork, clockwork. The minute she leave her house, she could hear him taking off all of his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> putting on a, 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 a porn, on, porn on his phone and going to town. And he had toys. He had, I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's pathetic, you guys. That's your wife. And I'll only tell you something. She's drop dead gorgeous. That's your wife. And you can't wait for her to leave the house so you can get undressed and get your rocks off. <laughs> And get your rocks off on someone on some on some skank on the internet you're never going to meet in your life. I mean, is this what we've come to in, as a society? Is this it? Is this what life is supposed to be all about? Now let's go into the next thing I need to talk to you all about. Because no one's talking about this. And it is a serious problem. I can't tell you how many clients I have dealing with this. How many stories I know about this? Personally, people in my life, it's called porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Look it up. Real thing, real thing, folks. <coughs> I need a sip of water for this one. <coughs> Yo. Men and women, men and women, but I'm going to talk about the man first. Think about it. Think about it, people. They're using their hand. Okay? Pretty much the tightest grip you're going to get. Okay? We got to talk about it. I know. It's gross. They're using their hand, tightest grip they're going to get on themselves. Watching other people have sex every day single day like it's their job remember i told you it's gotten to the point they're so deviant with this with this it's their job to be doing this so now fast forward they're doing this so often so many days so many months so many years what do you think's happening they can't 
perform with their spouse or if you're living a secular life, your partner, you can't perform for this person anymore. You can't actually have anything happen down there. I'm trying to make this... You can't have anything happening down there. Okay, you got a limp thing, <laughs> a limp situation with a human being because that's how much, that's how much these people out there are masturbating to porn and, and, and it's even to the point that I know women, I've talked about it before, I know women that they're watching it so often they can't perform either in bed. They're asking their partners if they can go in the shower and watch pornography to finish off. Yeah. That's real hot, guys. That's really intimate. That's really, really intimate. That's really what I'm looking for out there. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like that sounds like a great exchange to me. Let's just uh, all sit around, wait to go to work so that, you know, Johnny over here can be whacking off <laughs> while, while I'm, I'm making the bread. And this is what we got going on. And it's been so normalized. It is so beyond normalized that me talking about this tonight is really ticking a lot of people off. Well, good. Because you want to know something? It really ticks me off. It ticks me off that I got people day in and day out that are hurting because of this. And they don't have a place or space to go. Some of these therapists are telling people, well, why don't you watch it with them? Why don't you watch it with her? Yeah. Why don't you buy what the internet and the masses are selling? Why don't you buy it? Go ahead. And I always say this, I'm going to repeat it for you, for the people in the back or for the people that didn't hear my other videos, I know. It's not that I believe or that I feel or that I think. I know that pornography use leads to other things always. Always. I don't know of one person that has told me that they casually watch pornography and uh, they've never seen cheating. And um, <laughs> and they've never seen cheating. <laughs> oh, oh, Josh always makes me laugh hysterically. <laughs> uh, they, I've, never, I've never heard one person say that, they, that this has not led to other things, whether that be within their marriage their relationships, when someone's doing this stuff, guys. Okay, now let's even talk about when I was on the, the opposite end of this, the first time ever I lived with a porn addict. That was narc number two. First time I ever lived around this. I never dealt with this before. And I had people that buy this crap, buy what they're selling, telling me, oh, well, you know, it's just because he misses you. He's so in love with you that he can't wait for you to get home. That's what these people at my work were telling me. This led to me having an eating disorder because I thought, well, maybe if I lose another 5, 10 pounds, I was already underweight at this point in my life. Well, maybe if I lose some more weight, he'll stop looking at these, these, these uh, barely 18-looking-year-old broads. This messes with people, okay? And then we're supposed to feel like this is somehow our responsibility towards either getting on board with it or fixing it. And I don't give a crap what anybody, uh, what any of you want to say about it. It is cheating. It's the same exact concept, okay? It's cheating. I, I view cheating the minute that you got a bad thought in your head, the minute you entertain another person, like even flirting online, you're cheating. You're cheating on your, your, your significant other. You are. It's, it's, it's cheating. And now yeah, you got somebody waiting the minute you get in your car to drive, to drive off so they can whack around. 
whack, whack around the house. This is, this is, give me a break. I'm done with this. I'm done with hearing about it. I'm done with my clients suffering because of this. And let me tell you something else. Anytime that they're telling you, oh, I just watch it once every three weeks, that is a blatant lie. Liars, liars. That's like the, the, the nitwit I dated. Oh, I only do cocaine once every three weeks. Oh, I only do, I only do it once every three weeks. No, you're doing it every day. So, now, if you don't recognize that your partner can't even perform for you, okay, when, um, and you can't figure this out, you need to look into this, you guys. You need to find out how often they're watching pornography because pornography is the culprit. Pornography is the gateway to all the other drugs, all right? The OnlyFans, the prostitution, the strip clubs. They're not just stripping for you at strip clubs. I hate to tell you guys. You think that you're going to allow your man or woman to go hang out at strip clubs and go get their lap dances in the back room. Let me tell you something. I got inside scoop on that. I saw people get arrested over here in good old Rhode Island for this crap. They're full on screwing your husbands and wives. They're all having sex back there. I hate to tell you. Somebody needs to tell you. Wake up. It's not just a lap dance. Okay? There's a reason they got a curtain and you go behind the curtain. How many Asian spa parlors? Are getting they're, they're they're finding these places out. These places are dirty. They're not giving your 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 significant other a massage. Happy endings, and then they're forcing you. Okay, they're forcing you. No no no. You want you want full for sex full sex. They're trying to get you to have sex. They don't want to just give you because that's more money that they can get. It's prostitution, guys. And then you got the escort services. They're all doing this too. You guys. Don't understand. If you if you sense any of this stuff going on, it's all going on. I'll put money on it. Narcissists, the malignant narcissists, are sexual deviants. And this is what they're out there doing. Now, what comes with, with what, what what comes with being a sexual deviant? What do you think is the next thing I'm gonna tell you guys? What's coming with all this? Can anybody guess? What do you think this is? Where do you think this is going? When you got a sexual deviant. Thank you, Rye. I already got permission from the people I work with. I don't want to shame. And this is not about shaming people. This is about making people understand what's coming for you. When you know you got a sexual deviant on your hands, you are going to get a disease and yes yes and you were gonna get mental insanity beyond measures I have people I'm working with right now who have HIV they are HIV positive I have people that are that have HIV and for some of you that might be watching this that are deviants yourself you'll sit there and you'll say well, that's not bad. They got medication now for it. Big whoop. Big whoop. Big whoop. Yeah. Talk to my clients that, uh, that have it. Talk to them. How about my clients and friends I've had in my lifetime that have herpes? How about the numerous of times I've told people in sessions, I warn them, you got to get out. You have to stop doing this with this person. You have to stop having sex. You found out that your partner is cheating. You need to stop having sex because you're going to wind up with a disease that is not curable. And what happens? Can't tell you guys the amount of times. They call me up a week, two weeks, a few months later, in tears. 
Oh my God, you were so right. This is horrible. I'm in my 50s and 60s and I got to be dealing with this. Many years ago, I had a roommate who had herpes. And it is not pretty. And I'm gonna tell you something. When you get it down there and you, you, you are under stress, okay? Now, some people have been lucky enough to not have a lot of outbreaks, but I've not known many people that have not, con not continuously having outbreaks because the narc gave them this disease knowing full well that they had it and did not disclose it. And these are the people I have with HIV. One of which has taken, taken this guy to court as we speak. She's, she's suing him. But guys, you don't want to trust me when I'm telling you this. If they are sexual deviants, this is where you're headed. And you do not want this. Trust me. You do not want to be dealing with this stuff. You know what separates me from you that I don't have this? It's called luck. I just happen to have better luck than you. But this is where your life is headed when you stay with a malignant narcissist. This is where your life is headed. You are now, your life is in jeopardy. Your life is at stake. Your everyday health, herpes guys, leads to other things too. Now, I don't want to scare you, for those of you, that have it. There's a lot that can be done. But for those of you that don't have it, don't put yourself in a position to get it, is what I'm saying. If you know that your narcissist has cheated, you need to get yourself out. Because I'm telling you guys, this stuff is not funny. There's nothing good that's coming of this. And you gotta, you know, if you're a decent person and you're not a narcissist, you have to tell people for the rest of your life. So please listen to me tonight. Please stop the insanity. And as was mentioned earlier, you are mentally going to go insane on top of everything else that you now are dealing with. Your doctor's visits, the medications, you have to watch your diet. All these things can, can lead to breakouts. Please listen to me tonight, you guys. I'm not over-exaggerating this stuff. This is the stuff I am hearing on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. It's, a, it's, it's, it's time to start talking about this and to put an end to this. This is not good. This is really bad. If you guys wait, okay, and you get to know someone and you take your sweet time, sweet time, getting to know someone, you be, you be friends with somebody. You, you be friends with somebody first. You see what they're all about. And yes, and we need to get into the, we need now need to get into, okay. You guys think that, okay, the, the, um, the narcissist is just into porn and that's all that, no. How do you think these people got involved with sex trafficking and rings and that they have to keep increasing the crap that they're watching. So it gets worse and worse and worse, the things that they're watching. Now a 24 year old, you know, perfect body whore on the internet isn't getting people off anymore. So now they gotta go down to 18. Next thing you know, they're looking at 12 year olds. This is how it all started. Do you think that the pizza gate and all this crap was starting with, uh, with just an innocent? No, it started with pornography use. So understand that. You think it's so innocent that your partner does it or you do, do it every so often. Don't be, don't be a fool. This is how it all starts. And the serial killers, I've talked about this. This is how they started. They were all porn addicts. Now, the very last thing I need to talk to you guys about is the spiritual aspects of this. The spiritual aspects of this. When you have intercourse or any type of sexual 
acts that you're doing with somebody, okay? And especially when you do this very quickly with someone or you do it with somebody that you do not know or I'm going to go as far as to say because I have really strongly took back my beliefs and what's written in the Bible. That's where I get my answers, okay? You have to be in a covenant with someone, okay? You have to be in a marriage with someone, all right? I know, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm archaic, old way of thinking, old fart. All right. No. Because if you do not make this commitment with someone and they are not making it with you, there is no grounds by which they can break the rules and think about, well, I'm not married to this person. And this is where it all ends up. This is how this cycle is constantly going on in this world. This is it. Because people have this mentality. Well, you know, if it don't work out with you, I'll just go uh, find somebody else. And this is the world we live in. No one has value in anybody else. It's just this, this disposable thing that people are doing. And the sex to people is about the pleasure. And the rest of it, I'll take a pill for that. I'll just take a pill for that. When you think about what sex is, it's supposed to be life-giving and love-giving, and the pleasure is the bonus. And right now, it's completely the opposite in this world we live in. Now, we've gone through this in plenty of times in our history where people did not have morals, values, standards, and we see what happened in those times. We see the fall of, of, of society during those times, and we're seeing it right now, guys. We're seeing it right now. So, when you have sex with somebody that is not clean, that is not that 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 has indwelling spirits inside of them, dwelling spirits inside of them, you are putting yourself vulnerable and open to those spirits that they have coming right inside of you and affect or and or if you don't believe that that happens, they're affecting you guys. They're affecting you greatly. There is a spiritual thing that happens when you sleep with someone. There's a spiritual thing that happens. And whether you want to believe that or not, I and so many others I've spoken to and so many others I've done sessions with and so many others that I, I have this um, wonderful... Um, friendship relationship with we've talked about this it's the truth believe it or not spiritual infections are what i believe the narcissists are doing if they can spiritually infect you they can affect you on all other levels as well psychologically mentally emotionally and physically but if you are not right with your creator and you do not have a relationship and understanding that, the, that, that, you know, Jesus Christ, for me, my creator is Jesus Christ. I know he's real. He has proven that to me. He has shown himself to me. He's shown his presence to me in my life. So it's not all BS. It's, you know, the, the Bible is in an ancient relic just there for, for uh, someone to... Um, I don't know, to put on their, you know, to decorate on the coffee table or on their bookshelf. No. The only time I've ever gotten answers in my life is when I opened up that book and understood what I was reading and understood it. And, I, and then talked to people when I didn't understand certain stories in the Bible. And I'm going to continue to do that in my life. That's where I'm at. Now, I hope and I pray that there are people out there that heard this tonight and recognize that this is serious. Sex is serious. Sex 
can ruin your life. Sex can lead to soul tie connections that now you got to work everything in you to getting rid of. Everything in you. You're exchanging souls. It's not just about orgasm, having a cigarette, and going to bed. <laughs> it's not just about that. All right? No. It's much, much deeper and greater. I hope that this message hits some of you tonight. I hope that you're able to take it in because I wouldn't be on my rocking chair again preaching this to people if I didn't know a thing or two or I didn't have backup with the clients I have and the stories that are told to me and the ways in which I see how this operates and works. I hope you guys can see it too. And I hope that whatever you're doing out there, if you're being destructive to yourself, to your mind, your body, your spirit, your soul, you get yourself some help. You talk to somebody that can help you understand what you're going through. I've been through it all, you guys. I've been through it all. All right? And, you know, um, you, you're seeing all these comments in this, in this live tonight. You know you're not alone. I think... Honestly, most people that have not submitted over and have not given over to the dark, the dark side can recognize there's something going on in this world right now that's wrong. It, don't, it doesn't feel right. It does not feel right. Something's wrong, right? I want to talk real briefly too. How quickly, how, 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 uh, I don't know about you guys, but anytime I've done something that I know I shouldn't, I can feel that in my in myself the next day. There's something that is telling me I wasn't supposed to do that. I wasn't supposed to get intoxicated like that last night. They're all laughing. All my friends are laughing at the things I said. I don't think it's very funny. Or uh, I wasn't supposed to sleep with that person last night. Well, it doesn't feel right. You know, why do you get that innate guilt? Do you guys ever think about that? That innate shame that comes when you do something you know you're not supposed to be. And for some of you, you don't, you never learned about spiritualities, but you still have those feelings. Like something's not, I wasn't supposed to do that. What, how do you, how do you explain that or describe that? Right? How? Okay, I think I've spoken enough. Again, I hope this helps some of you. I'd be happy to work with you one-to-one -one coaching if you're experiencing any of this. I am a non-judgmental zone of anybody and everybody of all different differentiating backgrounds come to me. I would love to help you in any possible way I can. You can email me at tracefaceit at gmail.com. One of the things I don't promote enough is that I take people that are you know last minute you're having a bad day, you want to talk, I'll get you in. I'll stay up to whatever hours I have to or wake up whatever time I have to. Um, most of the people close to me know I don't sleep. <laughs> I would rather help people and be there for people that need it. I'm Trace Face, and as we know, it is time we all face the truth together.